Hey guys, welcome to another video of Whiteboard Thursday. I'm Irfan Baki and today I solve the number one most frequently asked interview question, which is how do you find a number at a particular position in the Fibonacci series? And wait, that's not it. There's a twist at the end. So make sure you watch the video till the end. And if you are watching my channel and these videos for the first time, basically Whiteboard Thursdays is where I pick an interview question, a coding interview question, and I solve it on a whiteboard in a real interview setting. So please, if you like this series, consider subscribing and like this video right now to support me and the channel. So let's get started with the problem. Let me draw out a few numbers in the Fibonacci series mm -hmm. and then we'll go through the logic of yeah. doing it. So I'll say 0, 1, 1 comes 2, 3, 5, 8, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I want to find the number at position six, which is eight in this case. Yeah. Then what I'll need is to find the number at position five and position four, mm -hmm. right? And then take the sum of those. If I'm looking for a number at position five, in the same way I'll need to find the number at position four and position three. Okay. Now, looks like we are calculating the numbers mm -hmm. uh, more than once. For each position right so i'll need some mechanism to store the values so let me initialize the function first and then we'll go through it mm -hmm. let's say function i call it fib mm -hmm. and it takes in a position so in order for me to remember what calculations i already did for a particular position let me initialize an array mm -hmm. let's say the length of the array is equal to the position and then I can have my recursive function inside of this. So I'll say function, let me just call it f, mm -hmm. and it also takes a position. Yeah. So with function f, mm -hmm. um, anytime it finds the answer to a position inside of this array, it just returns that. If it doesn't, then it goes through calculating what the answer is. So let's say I, I have an if statement. If array position, that means that we have already calculated the value of that mm -hmm. position. If that exists, then return um, array position. Yeah? yeah? Now, let's say that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So what will we do? Um, we need to store that value in this array. We need to calculate it and store it in this array, yeah. right? So let's say um, I cover my base case first. Mm -hmm. So if position is less than two in this case, mm -hmm. so as these two are base cases, if it's less than two, then I just say array position equals position, right? Uh -huh. So if it's zero, then my I'll store zero in the array. If it's one, I'll store one in the array at that, at that index. Now I will say if, now comes the meat of the recursion, right? I will say that if this is not the case, mm -hmm. then I'll have an else statement mm -hmm. saying that calculate recursively yeah. the the Fibonacci sequence or the Fibonacci number at that position. So I'll say array mm -hmm. at the position equals whatever the function f is, f at that position minus one mm -hmm. plus f at that position minus two, right? Yeah. And so that's it for our recursion. After this is done, I'll just, um, I will return whatever my number was over here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll say return array position. Perfect. So this would be my recursive function. Mm -hmm. Now I'll need to call this somehow. So I'll just say fib, or no, f of position mm -hmm. return inside of my fib function, mm -hmm. and that's it. So you'll see that at the end, I will have this array full, 
So my space complexity is linear. Mm -hmm. And my time complexity in this case is that I am calculating the positions or the numbers at positions for each one of these elements. So that's going to be linear as well. In constant space, mm -hmm. I think I can. We can do it in constant space. It would, it would. Um, so instead of recursive uh, implementation, I can do it an iterative uh, implementation, and I think that would, that would take constant space. Okay. So let me let me go through it. Um, let's say I'm starting with the last index, mm -hmm. right? I will say that while. Um, I will need basically to tra uh, keep track of the last um, element and the one after it or the one before it, right? Mm -hmm. And at each point, I would need um, those two values in order to compute the next one. Yeah. So actually, instead of, so for this recursion, we are backtracking. Yeah. Perhaps with my iterative implementation, I can forward track, mm -hmm. right? So initially I can store in memory mm -hmm. what my, let's say, let's call the second to last and this last uh -huh. values. Let's assume that um, right now we're talking about the second index or the, not the second index, the third position. Yeah. So if that's the case, I'll be looking at the sum of the last and the second last. So here is what it would look like let me let me erase this i'll say function um let's call it fib again mm -hmm. takes in position let's say initially the first case is our base case what we had in recursion i'll say if position is less than two, return position, right? So we take care of that base case. Mm -hmm. Now I will, I will start with this particular position and iterate forward. Mm -hmm. So let me say my second S last is zero and my last is one in this mm -hmm. case, right? So this would be second last and that would be last. So I will now iterate from, um, from last plus one, which is, I'll, I'll start with two, right? The, the second position. And um, I, will, I, will, I will end at the position uh, that I'm at uh, at the end, right? So I'll, I'll basically say uh, while, so let me, let me say cur, mm -hmm. um, cur position equals two, yeah. right? So I'll say while cur position is less than or equal to position, uh -huh. I continue on with this while loop. Now what I'll need to do is after I've completed whatever I need to do, I'll need to increment my current position by one, right? Yeah. So I can only increment it after I've found um, what its value is and I update the second last and the last values. Mm -hmm. So let's say I am, um, I'm storing my, my last value mm -hmm. in a temp variable. So I'll say last, right? Yeah. So now I can update my last value to, um, so my current value. So for example, if last was this and my second last was this, first of all, I will need a current value. So my current value right now will be the last value for the next iteration, right? Mm -hmm. So this last value will basically be last plus second last, right? Yeah. Now, um, my second last value is whatever was last before. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll say s last equals temp. Yeah? yeah. So now I just updated the second last and last values. Mm -hmm. And now I'll say cur position plus plus. And I'll let the while loop run. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the while loop, I will, I will, I will have my value. Let's say current position is six, mm -hmm. right? So it's still less than or equal to the position. Mm -hmm. So I'm over here, and at the end of it, I will be updating my last value, mm -hmm. right? So at the end, whatever is my last value is the is the answer that we're looking for. So I'll just say return last, and we're done. So this would this would still be uh, linear time, but it would be constant space. So today's tip is basically if the interview changes up the problem towards the end, make sure you're thinking out loud and keeping on describing whatever is going in your mind to the interviewer throughout the time when you're still thinking about how to approach a new problem. And eventually when you figure out the solution, just go ahead and solve it. So this was it for today's problem. Make sure you subscribe and hit like to the video and I will see you next time.